life will, you know, like karma will, will, will smack you one for way real? or another. Yeah. Like for real. You know, like, yeah, we, you know, we, we when we're young, you, you think you're the shit. And then when you get older, you're like, you really ain't the shit. You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's that time again. Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London or central as you need to be. You say it every week. Check it out. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. And, uh, you know, it's the norm now. We're jumping on the Zoom thing for the internationals. It'd be rude not to. Um, and on the other end, man, to... Mate, I, I where to begin? He, he inspired me immensely growing up and... From mixtapes, Beat Junkies Volume 2, I think was the first, you know, just legacy holding all over the shop, ITF, team champion, um, visionaries, DJ, producer, com- collaborator from all walks of East Coast to West Coast, hip hop from the 90s to now, DJ Rep, Mac in the place, how are we? Salute, salute brother, it's been a minute, it's yeah. been a hot minute. It's been a hot minute, it's really hard to combine all of your, I mean like, Without gushing, which you deserve every right, uh, it's it's really hard. you've done so so much in your career, brother. Man, thank you. I'm, I, I'm honestly just blessed, just like like you. I mean, this is this culture, you know, hip hop culture. You know, basically, it, it, it saved my life. Not to sound cliche and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. uh, being a, 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 a American-born Filipino, it helped it, it helped me. Uh, to really respect my own culture, where my parent, my parents are from the Philippines, and they, they migrated to the to, to the United States in, in '68 and stuff. So I mean, uh, it gave me everything that you know, gave me my uh, knowledge of self, and just just and made a shy kid just you know, you know, be just be able to able to express himself, and you know, yeah. and and it this culture brought me in my wildest dreams have brought me all over the world and done things that I would never think I would have never done yeah. at all and able to meet my heroes and actually become friends with them and or meet have friends that are in, you know in different parts of the world yeah. because of hip hop and like yeah. right now you know yeah. for real it's a, it's a mad one. We uh, uh, we were talking, you know, inevitably, you know, we've not seen each other for ages, so we were we were going back to go forward <laughs> prior to this chat. Um, and yeah, man, like these times, these times of of when we were crossing paths, um, they 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 go back in my mind as some very informative years of 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 discovery and just absorbing everything and everyone and. Um, I mean, let's go there because, you know, this was ITF era. This was Beat Junkies was were really coming out of the U.S. into some international territories by the yeah. time we'd cross paths, right? Yes. Um, man, that's crazy. Like, uh, obviously, before we were there, we were talking about, the, like, kind of like, you, you brought up that we were, last time we seen each other, at least from your re- 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 recollection, it was like it was at the at South by Southwest. And I'm like, really? I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. And then... Can I cuss? <laughs> yeah, it's your podcast, okay. brother. Go. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, um, what I really remember was, like I said, like the ITF. I don't, I, I, I don't remember. It was like two. It was a two thousand five, two thousand six. I don't know. It's in, it's like the mid, maybe mid late two thousands. I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, uh, I was with on on the road with the Visionaries uh, doing a tour. You know, like obviously, and I don't know. Was was it in Germany or I, I forgot which country it was, but it was the ITF battle slash. There was a beatbox uh, uh, championship too, as well. That's right. So uh, I had a, obviously I had a DJ and I had to um, perform with the visionaries. I had to judge ITF, and you were there to perform and host and I think judge the beat, beatbox championship. So they were getting a um, lot of bang for their buck back then, right? <laughs> I mean, they still do. Promoters try to do. I mean, that's I think is bang for their buck and shit. Just try like, well, if you do this, I, you know, if you can do this, you can do this, and you know, you had to like. 
you yeah. had to kind of finagle. I mean, especially as as being independent. You were, if you weren't like on a major label or anything, you've been, you know, like into being independent artists and stuff like that. You had to try to get whatever you can for yeah. whatever budget it is and stuff like that. So for sure. the answer was always yes. I mean, it always, yeah. Yeah. like you say. I mean, for, I mean, like, but for you, like, you know, it was easy for you were just a solo artist. I was with six, you know, like me and, you know, visionaries are six of us. So like, yeah. you know, that's, it's kind of hard. It's kind of <laughs> hard when you have like six people. And I know that's a, a big budget uh, for a lot of, promoters and stuff unless you're like someone like i don't know jurassic five or you know that, that have a big real big following and then they're willing to pay the bucks sometimes it's kind of hard for sure. you know stuff so, but yeah yeah those were the those were the eras brother that was the eras um actually i, I wasn't gonna but i'm gonna actually get into the visionary scene because the new album came out and bro yeah yes. uh, the ic youtube is banging Oh, you so you actually you got you actually listen you actually listen yeah you, for sure you actually got it okay I, I don't know you know like you know <laughs> I had that was a beat, baby. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's sick. Um, and and furthermore, I mean, there were, they, I mean, first of all, it took me right back to LA, man. I missed that place so much. For <laughs> um, oh man, yeah. For a lot of people who don't know, uh, Visionaries, uh, we have a new album called V, uh, uh, properly called V. It's our fifth album. Produced by and, you, I might add. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo. This is actually this is actually the first. Usually, uh, in all our albums, like Kiko and myself are the main producers, and then of course we either have either like J Rock or Bad Boo. Yeah. Uh, uh, of course, at the time we had like you know we had like you know like on our, our the album before you know our our fourth album uh, we are the ones we had you know we had Dilla we had Madlib we had Kev Brown crazy before, before that you know we had Ono. Uh, can kick I mean you know we had you know all the homies and stuff but majority of the production was was held down by Key Key and myself Mm -hmm. Um, and then after that after the fourth album obviously um, there was like a 13-14 span for the next album and a lot of it was like you know uh, uh, I only can speak for myself and stuff so um, Mm. and technically I I was kind of like burnt out you know and uh, uh, you know, being in a group, it's, it's very hard, you know, it's, yeah. you know, it's like, it's, it's like, it's a marriage basically and stuff. So, yeah. uh, and for me personally, I, I needed to, like, I needed to venture out and grow as a person and as a, a DJ and as producer and stuff like that. So, mm. I mean, everybody, I mean, the group never broke up. We always did shows, but we never recorded. So, you know, like, like when you, when we perform, it's like, you know, it's like drinking water. It's like boom, 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 boom. Back on the bike. Yeah. Mary on the bike. But to record was a whole, you know, everybody was in a different space. Everybody, you know, and, you know, we, we, as any, any group or any family or like that, you know, we had disagreements or whatever or not, but the love was always still there, but it was just yeah. not, you know, like, like, again, only can speak for myself. I had to learn how to, you know, like, you know, just to grow and to, uh, you know, like to, to take a break and just to learn and, and get experience and stuff. And, mm. and, uh, and then, and the guy, because, the you know, our fans would always want one's next album, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, some of the, you know, some of the guys said, we got to make a new album. And, yeah. and, you know, to tell you the truth, I was not mentally prefer, you know, prepared for that, you know? So, so I, I you know, like, when we came back, you know, when it was time to make the album, I, I think, you know, by the time, you know, when, it, you know, like, uh, I, I felt confident enough for, but by the time, like, you know, like I was able to, I had a couple of projects under my belt. I did things on my own. I, I, uh, cause a lot of people don't know me as a, really as a producer, they don't know me as, you know, as a DJ, a turntablist or whatever, whatnot. Yeah. So the, the whole, the whole beat, book, uh, beat junkies, junkies like, thing, like, you know, dynasty. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, uh, so I kind of like, you know, I just, you know, and, and being, you know, being a DJ, it was the next progression as being a producer. If you came from that genera, you know, you came from that era, it's like, you know, the, basically the world's greatest hip hop producers were DJs. So that's the next evolution and stuff. But, you know, yeah. I've always been making beats, but I've never, you know, never really outside of the visionaries or whatever circle I, you know, got rolled with and stuff like that so mm-hmm. i wanted to start venturing out so when i was able when i felt confident of what i do and usually because like you know the djs you know we don't really 
we, you know, we, we speak with our hands. I don't like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as a, you're an MC, so you know, you guys have to be like this. I, I and and I have you, and, you know, when you have five MCs and one DJ, and you have yeah. six personalities, you're gonna clash heads, and you know, so it's and that's a, it was a thing like sometimes it's kind of hard to do. Uh, yeah. And there's certain things I can't do within the visionaries that I wanted to do outside of that, you know, like musically wise too, as well, you know, yeah. professionally and musically and stuff. So uh, when I came, so when I, when it was like, when I, when it, when I finally decided to say, you know, like, let's do a visionaries album. But I said, you know, cause like the guys were saying, yo, you and Key should do this. He's like, Brett, you should make a visionaries beat. And I was like, I don't even know what a visionaries beat is. Oh, that's like the is. hardest thing to even suggest, I bet, you know. <laughs> How? Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, like, like as an artist, you should know this too as well, is that you have, to, I realized learning that you have to make things from your heart, you know, like oh, it, yeah. it has to make sense, right? And I learned a lot also, you know, again, as, as a person, as a man and stuff like that, I learned stuff that, you know, you have to be true to yourself. Mm. Also, when you, you got to learn how to like, when you're in a relationship, you have, it's a give and take, but that has, but you have to learn how to communicate, and yeah. you have to also become, you know, confident. And they take, mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, as artists, you you're very sensitive with your own work, so it's That's like, right. you know, when someone critic, when some, some, someone criticizes your shit, you you just like you, you take it to heart, you know. For sure. For sure. So, but I had to learn as like you can't. I over the years and stuff during those those years from uh, fourth album. Uh, came out in 2006 mm. from 2006 mm. to, to to you know it's up to now like I learned a lot in terms of like you you realize you can't please everybody the you hardest really, lesson to learn man it oh. is the hardest lesson to learn you can't please everybody all you can do is is uh do your best even if it's not it's like as long as you tried your best you can't be afraid of failing mm -hmm. you know That's like right. I uh, what I've learned is that mm -hmm. if you're afraid to if you're afraid to fail, then you're fr uh, afraid to succeed. Ooh, yo, fact. You yeah, not, yeah, exactly. So, and then mm. what? What also like during the process? I've uh, uh, if you met, you know, like back then, you know, I was I was pretty heavy set. I was kind of fat, you know, like that. So, uh, then during that those 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 times, I I, I started learning. Uh, I started late, but uh, I started training jiu-jitsu, Brazilian okay. jiu-jitsu. So um, what I've learned from that is like that helped another level in terms of like showing me like your ego is not your amigo. Because like when you go train and stuff, like you could be, oh, sure, you're the baddest, whatever this. Yeah, yeah. When you go and train in the mats, that, that, don't, that doesn't matter. So you can get touched. You can get choked out. And mm -hmm. that made me realize like, okay. That another add another la layer like okay, you know, don't think you're the shit because there might be there's someone out there you might be better than someone, but there's out someone out there who's gonna is better than you and you get choked out. Yeah, real, real quick. So that kind of helped me in terms of applying that to my lesson of learning. You know, applying to every everyday life and into into my music and stuff. So wow. once I get that mindset in terms of this like. You're always a student. That's it. You know, and you're just going to learn. Yeah. You just do. You can't, you know, your biggest competition is yourself. I mean, For everything really? I say is a, is a very cliche. It's cl You hear this all the time. Yeah. But it's so I'll true you. when you, you know, you, when you, when you go through life and stuff and life, life will, you know, like karma will, will, will smack you one For way real? or another. Yeah. Like for real. You know, like, yeah, we, you know, we, we when we're young, you, you think you're the shit. And then when you get older, you're like, you really ain't the shit. Yeah. It's funny, actually, because you you learn more as you get older. It's almost like you want to roll reverse your head, you know, you, you, so that you're younger with a wiser head. It's, 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 it's a weird, it's a weird science. And you know what? Um, the things you talk about there, though, is, mm. uh, is, is a hip hop mentality. It's knowledge of self. That's totally. really what we're getting at, isn't it? Totally. So going to add to that, to going back to the visionaries thing. So when I said, look, guys, we're going to make the album, but I'm going to do all the beats. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's an, if you listen to the album, there's a skit on there. I got from, from Jazzy Jeff, Jeff, you know, cause he, he preached this to us, you know, to a lot of us and stuff saying like, Hey man, die empty. 
die empty. Basically, you're saying like, don't hold on to shit, let it go. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Just put it right. So I took that same attitude in making this album and saying like, guys, here, here's the beats. I don't know what a visionary's beat is. Mm. These are my beats. Even if you don't feel it, write to it. Don't yes. overthink it. Don't overthink yeah. it. Just do it, right? Because because before, everybody's like, yo, we need to do this. We need to do that. It's like, nah, dude. If you keep on doing that, we're never going to... Just just write. Just whatever comes out, comes out. Mm. It, 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 you know? And basically, that's how the album was. Like I said... Uh, and I just like... You know? And I learned to also before, you know, trying to overproduce or like, you know, like, hey, you got to do your... You got to do your verses, this and this. I, I said, you know what, guys... I'll let awesome. you write. Just write your whatever. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you how to write. Don't tell me how to make my beats. Yeah. Right? Because <laughs> before, they would always tell you, like, Rhett, you need to do this and this. And it's like, you know, and again, as Love artists, it. we're yeah. we're sensitive to shit. So I kind of, like, I got to a point where just like, guys, look, I'm not going to tell you how to write. You yeah. be your own critic and stuff. Yeah. If, I, if it sounds dope to me, uh, cool. If you're happy with it, cool. Give me those. And I'll rearrange it the way it's supposed to be, you know, like that. So, and it took us three years so to good. over the off and on, you know, because like the guys, I, at one point I would say like, if they wanted to record, it's like, guys, go record. Don't wait for me. Because they were always waiting for me. Like for whatever reason, they're waiting for me. And Key is the one making beats and stuff too. It's like, record with Key. Yeah. Go with yeah. Key, you know, like, but, for, you know, like, but then it got to a point where just like, because they're, I, it, you know, like, during those times, again, you know, uh, I was making moves, uh, uh, um, making, real, you know, building relationships and stuff. And mm -hmm. I'm very lucky to, you know, again, it's, it's just and, and getting experiences. So I was bringing that to the table and stuff like that. Just, as in what? As in like other collaborations and artistic moves? That and just busy, like, you know, being in an industry. Yeah, you know, for sure. You know, being independent and stuff. Not, not, not necessarily being in, in the the quote made you know the big major you know like i i stay away from that shit yeah. you know like but you have to learn it just to know what it is just you know, the like, foundations of it the, right. the, the, you get one people got to understand there's there's the culture there's the music and there's the music business for real business of making music so you yeah. have to you know and let's be real it's making money in the music business unless you're on some a, a certain t tier yeah. it, it, it's rough you got it like it's you have to class. multitask yeah yeah. Working class, so, and you have to be realistic about shit. Mm. That's one thing about like, especially now with social media, you see what's you know what's presented to you, but they don't see what's behind the scenes and shit like that. Totally. And, it, and I, it made me realize, like, you know what? You just got to be authentic to who. I mean, again, sound not to sound cliche, you got to be authentic and be true to yourself. And like, once you have that realistic, like, you know what? Those other, you know, like, of course, having videos, this and this and this and that, you know, like. You, that's just, that's just, you know, that's just imaging. You just have to, and you realize when you pinpoint what you really like to do and find mm. your, find your crowd or lane, you stick to that. Don't, yeah. and if every, and then everything else is just icing on the cake. You yeah, just yeah, gotta, yeah. and I mean, and I've learned too is also like, you know, sometimes, you know, the lifestyle we were at young, you, you oh, I want to live my life, you know, just purely on my art and, and the way how the industry is set up, you you know, it's not sometimes, you know, it, it, only very few can do that, you know? Yeah. yeah. But you still could do it. But you, sometimes there, when, when reality sets in, there's there's no shame in getting a daytime job or whatever, yeah. whatnot. Yeah. Or have, you know, if you're going to do something. a balance somewhere, yeah. Yeah. Or if you're going to have, if you're going to be in your whatever profession, or for something like us. You have to have, you have to multitask. You have to have like at least five other For things real. to get the stream. Like yeah. you're doing podcasting, you're doing, you know, like you have to, that's just, that's right. you know, and that's the reality. And well, the craziest thing back then too, as well to compare now, mm. social media, I mean, there were social media, but it was, it was kind of like, it was just starting. Right. You know, yeah. but, but now it's like it, even before then it's like you, if you wanted to be a recording artist, you had to really invest money. It's like it cost a lot of money going to the studio and shit. Now Over it's like that, you yeah. got yeah. Now, now look, look, technology. We're doing this. We you, you can make beats on your laptop versus like 
you you can you can DJ on a controller like you know you know all of digital that. and stuff all yeah. that and it's a little bit more cheaper versus like us it was it's expen- you know it was expensive hobby expensive passion and stuff like that like you spend yeah. a lot of money and stuff like that yeah. but that means that you were serious about it now the thing is is that you know I can't really knock them because I understand but you know but everybody wants to be in the limelight yeah yeah by hook or by crook <laughs> yeah I mean either way you know and I can't you know before I was like oh fuck that shit you know like again it as time goes on you see who's really serious and who has the talent Not that's everyone. what's gonna happen that's what's gonna, gonna happen always gonna happen always it may take a while yeah but it always you can tell who sticks with it and the, you know as the saying goes the you know the cream of the crop rises and stuff like that. For real, you know, you, 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 and it takes a lot. And what people don't understand, it takes a long time, like to even be a stop, some type of establishment, yeah. right? Ten yeah. years, at least ten years. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. And then even when we get that there, you still got it, like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah you it's know? like sperm to the egg, man. It's impossible. You, you, you never know how long the piece of string is on your legacy. You just got to keep going and. It's almost like it's seasonal, you know. Everyone has their time in the sun, but then it's that it's how you manage the downtime. Yeah, that's the, that's the uh, real. yeah. And, you know, like I said, it's like everyone. You just you just hit a point. Everybody has their chance, one way or another. You mm-hmm. know, one time or another. It's all about how you when you have that moment. What are you gonna do with it? Yeah. Sometimes, and sometimes it's, when you do have it, sometimes it's not meant to you to have it because you ha- didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. You know, like, again, it's, it's, everyone's journey is different. I've been really, really learning that, at, you know, you know, growing up, even at, at my age, like I said, the accolades you gave me is, 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 is such a blessing that you gave me, but I, I still look at myself as like, I'm still, I'm really a student. I'm, it's almost like, I feel like I'm just, uh, I'm really starting now. That makes any sense. That makes you know? complete sense, bro. You know, you know how this saying is, as you turn 40, that's when life really begins. Yeah, and mentally, and and just just you you've built all the armor on your body, and you've you've you know you you've gained in strength and less fucks to give. You you kind of just apply and attack things differently, don't you? Totally, totally. It's the best shit. Um, just a, a slight uh, you know juncture in in my thinking because you 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 mentioned about visionaries and the the kind of uh, dance that that you guys as a collective have to do um, and the multitask that DJ Rep Matic um, delegates himself to. I'm just thinking like, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but obviously there is a Visionaries which has a, a collective, a very strong, strong collective uh, vibe. Beat Junkies without a doubt, you know, a whole a, a fucking flame to this. Do you like the collaborative aspect is there something about that intensity that you like well being in two groups and a couple of other collectives and whatnot per se but you know obviously beat junkies and visionaries are the main my foundation stuff um so a lot of people don't know beat junkies we're you know we're still going strong oh um, yeah beat junkie tv yeah uh yeah, Beat Junkie TV. Our, that's our online school. We have we have our BeatJunkies.com, Amazing. which is pretty much everything Beat Junkies. And then we also have a, a brick and mortar. Right, yeah. We have our own uh, our own DJ school. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know the Beat Junkies to Sound here in in, in uh, Southern California. Uh, so sick. Yeah. So I mean, it's funny when we you know like uh, 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 being when you being around like 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 minded people. And, and, and being people that's like you hear the saying that you want to be around like like-minded people that same is as good as you or better than you that's so yeah. true because yeah. that pushes you to be better because like i you know the irony is this like i'm one of the oldest guys in the crew in the junkies right you know and the rest of the guys like baz mellow jay they're you know they're a little bit younger than me and stuff like that but like short and d uh, mm. I mean, you, you got know, crazy levels of. I mean, I'd, yeah. about cutting you too short. Yo, the crew. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, to, I've been. Crazy you know, I'm I'm older. Than, like I'm probably the old, one of the oldest, and the, 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 been doing a little bit longer and stuff. But these guys are fucking incredible and stuff. And just they keep 
they keep pushing me because I would like that was another thing too that humbled me. Is even though I've been done maybe done longer a little bit than them, mm. these guys were better than me, <laughs> straight up. And then my ego was like, oh. so it made me force like I don't want to be the weak link. You know, you the saying goes, you you don't want to be the weak link, so you yeah. always you always work harder. I like it. Te- I I still to this day have to work ten times harder. Just because some of them, you know, some of the guys are just so natural and shit like that. There's you know? sophistication so, in your t- style. You were versatile, and there was a, a sophistication about about your man. your thing, man. That means a lot. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you. Um, like I said, man, I'm a student. Like you know, like like again, from the, from the era we come from, you know, like you had to come up with your own style. You can't bite. No. You know. I mean, I mean. That the values of bite, you know, like the 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 values that we we grew up is totally different now. It's a different generation and stuff yeah. like that. And in some ways, I can't I can't blame them. I can't, you know, because like, it's in some ways it's our fault. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, why I say that is because people complain like, oh man, there's not so many dope hip hop. There ain't like this and that. There's not the great music, right? Yeah. And when you get older, you realize, man. The people, the people before us were saying the same thing about our shit. Our parents yeah. were saying the same thing. And now we're becoming you know, like our parents, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a lot of people that said that the same thing, too, that are from our generation, pro, you know, most, you know, let's be realistic. A lot of them have a, 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 got married, have kids, responsibilities. Yeah. And by that time, they left, you know, whatever they let, you know, they love. They left that behind. Yeah, at least eight years ag- eight years ago they leave it right? behind. Right, you know, like you know, granted, granted, that's a majority, but a lot of people that still have families and stuff, they still keep going. Like, mm. you never stop. If you really love this culture, you never stop. You right? never stop. You never man. participate. Right. I mean, yeah. okay, perfect examples, Jazzy Jeff. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I I always bring this up in a lot of interviews and stuff. Or like so you know, Jeff, because Jeff was was like. You know when Serato came out, when everybody, you know, I was one of them. I was like, "Fuck that shit, keep it real, whatever." Yeah, and Jeff was like, "Yeah, man, hey, check this out." I'm gonna boom, do boom. it. Yeah. When a guy, when someone that does that helped popularize Transform Scratch, <laughs> and does it, yeah, and telling you like, you know, yeah. the, the possibilities. It's like he's an OG. You gonna tell that to him? And he still can bust your ass. Yeah, so, you know, he may. I mean. <laughs> sure, he might not be able to do all the crazy new technical shit, but he still can bust your ass. Yeah. Better, you know, like that's what I'm saying. Can you do that? I mean, that that made me. And the the thing is, is that he kept on going. He never stopped. Yeah. Granted, you know, well, everybody can say, well, shoot, he got that Fresh Prince of Bel Air money and shit. Like, even what then? You know, he still had. Yeah. You know, it, it, you never stop because even if you get to that point, what happens? Yeah. Like it's like yeah. saying, like, okay, you won a DMC World Championship. That's great. But how long is those accolades? You can't mm. for that one year. You, you're not, like you know for us being you know 1997, 98 ITF team world champions. Me yeah. being a 1996 DMC West Coast champion. Yeah, that was great then. That's right. They said, "Yeah, that's great." But what are you doing now? That's right, and uh, a lot of people do hang. And I think that goes back to hanging around with good people that push you because some people, they have those acclaims and, you know, they work so hard to get to reach that goal. Sometimes there's that, and I've said it before in the podcast, there's like a level of PTSD where you come off the ride of something that you've worked really, really hard for by hook or by crook and you've lost money. You've, you know, you've done the 10,000 hours plus and you've alienated yourself from most of your family and friends and, and then you've done it and and then what? It's like coming off tour and trying to declimatize it, but for more. That's what I'm saying. It, yeah. it, it, it fucks with your head. It yeah. fucks with your head. Fu- like in terms of like, you have to realize why do you do this? Yeah. And it comes back down to what? Do you love what you do? Yeah. Once you get that that thinking of like, what made you do this in the first place? Because I mean, everybody that's in our, our in our passion, our career, mm. have a one or twice in their lifetime a thought of quitting. I I can remember that almost that one time that I almost quit mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. It was there was a point there was the transition from when things were going digital, like you know with Serato and, and, and social media and shit like that. And uh, some people were getting more gigs than I was, or yeah, yeah. whatever, you know, like that. And 
shit was, you know, wasn't popular, quote unquote popular at the time. You know, what like, was whatever. that though? What, what was that? What do? You, what would you on re, in in retrospect? In retrospect, do you, what? What was that? Um, was that an ego, or was that something more? A lot of his ego. A lot of yeah, definitely ego. Pride. I feel you. Ego. You know, because yeah. because you because you know you you like you said you just said you are used to having certain things, and then things yeah. change. And it took me a while to realize, like you know, I have to learn how to adopt. You know, yeah. and again, it goes back to even what saying with Jeff. Jeff says you have to, you know like adopt, but stick in your lane. You don't have to chase the trends. Mm. That's the thing. That was a hard lesson to learn. That's right. And, right. Yeah. And like, and people are saying like, they're like, even those, even those that are trying, like, they used to be the, you know, like the man back then and they're trying to come back in and they don't realize it's like things have changed. You know, it's, you have to, true. right. And what I also learned is like, you have, like, you have to learn, like a lot of the stuff when the transition and stuff, I learned a lot also from like from the younger generation. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I learned like even learning how to like the, to like, to, to go out there, you know, like, you know how it is. It's like back then. It's like you have a manager or whatever, and they mm-hmm. do the talking. You, you know, like kind of like there's a there's a thing. Now that's all. That's out the window now. Yeah. You know, you gotta like you really need. You know, especially if you you know want to be independent, you have to learn how to to um, engage with the people with your fans or whatever whatnot and stuff That's it's weird right. to hear it's weird to hear say fa- say fans to me because i still i still think of myself because you're a, a fan engine. yeah i'm still a fan and stuff like that um but i do say hip-hop is the only i could be wrong but for my you know hip-hop is the only genre that fans i have to say are the most fi- the finickiest the yeah. almost entitlement you know, dangerous like that. levels of lord of the flies in any venue back then. yeah <laughs> it's like, like a room like on the real real like you know like it, it you know like it's one thing because i i think again being a fan hmm. on one side and then when you become an, and then you cross over then you you start to you know you realize that you know that there's a there's a difference like it's just the same but it's a difference right yeah, yeah. but then you realize do you you don't want to be an ass like sometimes you become an asshole because the person that's like being an asshole like you know like i had you know, like I still to this day, I'm 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 really appreciative, but I'm not used to when people say, "Oh man, you changed my life," or this and this and that. Because it's like I'm still, yeah, yeah, doing, yeah. trying to figure out shit fan. myself. Yeah, right? I'm still, still a fan. It. I still love this, and I still believe in terms of like you treat people how you want to be treated. Yeah, right? for real, a thousand percent. You know? Yeah, and I think that's also comes also from I don't know from uh, your upbringing, whatever, whatnot, but. Yeah. I think when, when someone, you know, when like, again, hip hop, it's like, we're working at Bat Beats. You used to have people come in. And say, <laughs> Yo, man, what you know about that shit? And they try if to you're listening you. to this and watching this, it's <laughs> get to the visual. Yo, so yeah, I'm, I'm acting like on some B-boy, on some like <laughs> hardcore, like, dude, like, re, like, you know, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yo, yo, son, or you, yo, yo, G, you know, <laughs> what's up? What's, what's up? What you know about this shit, man? Uh, that shit's played out. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, is this shit dope? I heard it's whack. And I was like, okay, you heard, have you listened to that? Let me, you know, like, you're going to listen to someone? You're not listening for yourself? You know, like, you know, like, and usually when people come and give me, mm-hmm. when people give me attitudes like that, like, that's, the, that's the thing that's like, I usually try, you know, I, I was young too also, so I kind of like made, made done some things. So it's like, but as I got older, I realized, you know, if people, I'll, you know, came on with respect. I said, okay, thank you. But if they come with an asshole, I'll throw back that asshole. And then they, then they get offended and saying like, Rip Maddox's an asshole. And then all of a sudden you're me, in that cycle. You all of a sudden under that. Yeah. And for me, I, and I, I don't like, you know, like I try to treat, treat people with respect and stuff, but I don't like it when people call me an asshole. Cause I don't like to be, you know, I don't want to be an asshole. I really yeah. don't. But you know, but <laughs> I can't imagine you being an asshole, bro. <laughs> but it's, you'd be surprised. Some people said that I, I, man, it's even yeah. weird, like now. This is, the, you know, even for how many years, dude? Everybody mistaken me for Babs for Babu. What? Yeah, dude. Because you know, it's like <laughs> what? We're both we're both Filipino. Uh, okay. We're both in the same crew. We both DJ. Babs has a Babs has an you know like a easy remember name. 
I have a look that's pretty, you know, we don't look, you know, it's like the same thing, like all white people the same, all black people look the same and shit like that. All Asian people look the same, but you can't tell the difference between like what's Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Filipino, Samoans, you know. Like, he, 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 give me the basic demographic of a person that wouldn't know the difference between you and Babs. I don't, I just, it, it, it varies. We're in stereotype mode. I'm like, yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, look, people? Look, I mean, because people come up to me. Yo, Babu, I love the shit you do and stuff like that. Oh, my God. To this day, even when I lost weight, too, I don't wear hats. Here's the thing. I don't wear baseball hats. Yeah. All right. Starters. (laughs) Right. That's one thing. Uh, Babs can't grow facial hair, but the the, the sexiest part now, he wears glasses now. (laughs) So I'm bald headed. He, you know, he, he wears you know, caps all the time, or he has hair, some, you know, like, so I'm bald headed and stuff. Uh, at one point, you know, I had a big goatee and shit. Oh, I, no, I shaved. No, because Yo, you know what you used to do as well? We used to fucking kick our ass. You know, mm-hmm. people would always say, oh, there's the killer killer stance when beatboxing, you know, the kind of stance I did. You had a signature move that was like the, 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 the glasses, like, come on out. There. Yo, see you now. That's what it looked like. Yo. Yeah. But, but for whatever reason, they, you know, they get us mixed up. They mm. see that they know the face, but they know the name more better, whatever. Uh, it's Did funny. You both I, worked at um, Fat Beats too, didn't you? You both. Yeah, we both. Yeah, yeah. Baz was the, was the was the one of the first general managers for Fat Beats LA. Damn, that's cold, bro. Yeah, so and then and then basically like Jay, J Rock, you know, shots yeah. and then my man Silos who works with us at, at the school. Uh, um, Marvsky, I then I joined up. New Mark was working at there at one point. Mark Love, you know, like for LA, you know, like L, Fat, like like Fat Beats New York was the you know like the place to go to when you go to New York and you know like Fat Beats LA was the spot that every when you come to LA you got to go to. You know, be I, working there and shit. I can't even remember how many times I went to Fat Beats. I say it becomes a blur. And man, then, this is yeah, this, it's it's yeah. <laughs> it's no, like, bro. Yeah. So, but yeah, but yeah, everybody, you know, in some spirit, it's, it's weird. I get, it's a joke. So, it, it, I remember like one time, this is, oh, this is some crazy. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. So this is in 98 uh, DMC USA. This is the one that uh, Craze won. Shorts, Craze won the USA to go to, to go to become, he, this is the, fir- the, the, the road to becoming the fir- his first championship. Uh, Lord okay. Fitness was the, Lord Furness was the uh, uh, was the host. Short one second place. He he came out of retiring one. Nice. So, you know, tried to okay, one yeah, second yeah. place. Craze one. Third uh, dummy was third. We did teams and we were co- coordinating. Uh, I forgot with who, but Tony. You know, I think also with to, to Tony Prince. Hmm. Hold you know Tony. Tony. You know Tony. You know how Tony messes up everybody's names and all <laughs> that shit. Yeah. yeah. Ew, excuse me. No, 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 no disrespect yeah. to my UK peeps, but you know. So what? So this is in New York, and we finally, you know, us coming up like, yo, that's Tony Prince. You know, we got the videotapes. We're like, we're fucking, you know, like, we're gonna perform. We're gonna be performing. In the- it's one thing battling, and now we're on. Now we're performing and shit. It's really happening and with Tony and, Prince and, in the and, room. And, and it's the first time we're gonna see Tony Prince because none of us obviously made it to the world and shit. I mean, we could have done teams, but by that time. You know, after we won the ITF, you know, like, you know, yeah. we didn't do, te- you know, we didn't do teams and shit like that. We, we everybody, had, you know, like Baz was dialing, Jay's doing, you know, doing Friday Night Flavors and Stone yeah. Throw, me with yeah. Visionaries, Mellow spinning on the radio and then eventually going doing like, you know, doing Vegas and shit. You were like doing that. your things. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we're still a crew, but, you know, individually, we're also like doing a lot of shit, you know, mm-hmm. like you know, D and Short were, you know, also part of the pickles and shit like that. So, um, that's right. Uh, uh, um, we saw Tony. We're like, oh shit, there's Tony. And I, 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 I want to say I was the one coordinating. I, I did, uh, you know, me, and Tommy Gunn was also a, a, a beat junkie. Uh-huh. You know, there's 13 of us. That's right. A lot of people don't know. Tommy, Tommy was also a manager. So between Tommy and myself, we were coordinating with with DMC, and I, and also I think also with, with Tony through emails or whatever, whatnot. AOL. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> whatever yeah 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 that old yeah. school dial up shit old, old school dial up so yeah. so we finally you know corresponding with him through AO, AOL and then finally like you know we get there oh you there's Tony there's Tony right Baz was the first one to come like was really good like yo yo Tony man it's great to finally meet 
I kid you not. Oh, so it says, says this to, to Bat. Oh, Rhett Matic, it's great to finally meet you. Oh, and I'm right man. there. All of us are right there like, what the fuck? And Baz being a, a joker, I'll just call me Rhett. That's hilarious. Right? So sometimes I used to, like, I, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. Some, I get perturbed sometimes when people call, like, I'm not Babs. Some people are like, you're lying. You're Babu. I was like, I'm not Babu. There are times I would go like, hey, Babu. Like, What's up, man? Just call me Chris because his real name is Chris. Yo, man. So, man. Yeah, yeah, man. New dial- Luckily, I knew everything was going on with Dialate. It's like, yeah, new Dialate album's coming out. Oh, Duck Season 3 is about to, you know. Yeah, that, um, that's a toughie. That's a toughie. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I, I think I went off topic now. No, no, no. You're, 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 I'm still with you. I'm still with you. Um, do you feel like... Do you feel like uh, with with that many people... I mean, actually, run through the names again on, on the Beat Junkies. Let's go through this properly so that people yeah, so, are completely clear. So, so the Beat Junkies was formed in 1992, uh, founded by J-Rock. Yeah. Okay. Let's get that straight. That's why we call him the Funky President. Rock. Right? Uh, the original members are Jay, uh, DJ Curse, Two. Uh, uh, Mello, and myself. Three. Four. You know, so those are the original members. And then originally then Icy Ice, uh, uh, Symphony, who's Icy Ice's sister. So it was our, we, had, we had a female member. Right. right? Okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, sh- Shortcut, D Styles. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that Short and D were junkies before they were Pickles. Didn't members. know that. Yeah. They they became junkie they were junkies before becoming pickle members. Uh, uh, then uh, um, Tommy Gunn, Tommy Gunn, yeah, uh, DJ What. Um, there you go. And then the last me- the, the the two last members of the join was uh, uh, was uh, Babs Babu and Mr. Chalk. And then a lot of here's a little tidbit, you know, because we some people heard about it and we talk about it once in a while. Yeah. At one point, we had a. Uh, uh, DJ Rectangle, or Hot Minute. As yes, a, as I a, remember. Now, there was something about that. It would actually have been weird if he hadn't, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, he was for Hot Minute. And then uh, yeah. we had another cat named Sweet Pea. And stuff that's like that. but, that. Right, but that's, but the members I've mentioned, you know, there's, there's, there's 13 of us and stuff. So, yeah, uh, that's okay. Being, being around people and stuff. So with the junkies and stuff, you know, being around people, that's good is it pushes you like that. So, yeah. and knock on wood, you know, I think, you know, like we were, we were, you know, the junkies have been, you know, we're lo- very lucky that we are considered part of the top, the top three crews of turntablism, I guess. Yeah, the real. history of turntable, right? So, yeah. but to, to me is like uh, our biggest accomplishments is that we're still a crew. A crew, still friends. That's right. right. Co- co- compared to, to the to the, to the pickles and the X Men or ex- executioners, yeah. right? You know, all the perverts so, who, but of all, was, suffered in different ways in not being right, able right. to stay. Right. So, you know. but I mean, for I mean, like any crews, we we still had we had our own, own internal beefs. I wouldn't say beefs, but like internal conflicts and whatever, whatnot. Yeah. But for the most part, what you know, like in some ways. And this is from my my collection, my, my memory. You know, so I'm sure some of the guys might have different sizes. Some, but for me, yeah, uh, um, I've always looked like you know, out of the top three, that everybody would always go to the pickles or the executioners, right? I would come for for the for, for the three crews, and we're like you know, like whatever for the third. Um, and it's kind of interesting because the the pickles were straight scratching, the, the executioners were straight. Beat jugglers. That's right. And we were in between. Do you think that saved the situation that allowed you guys to flourish? As a, you know, that it was almost like um, you were, the pressure wasn't on you to be East Coast, West Coast, Kings or whatever. Because well, um, there's always been a reliability. Like you say, you guys are all were so well-rounded. There's a strong reliability in that. Well, there was, a, there was a couple of things I like to think, you know, in my humble personal opinion. Is that okay? One is that uh, uh, we weren't as popular, so it, like it used to kind of kind of fuck with us in our heads. Like, really? how come we're you like? Oh, yeah, I mean, considering like certain things that we've done, we worked hard, but we get glo- glossed over. Do you think you know? there was a DMC thing? 
I don't know. Uh, it, it doesn't. It, it, that you went. I don't know. I don't know. It's just certain things. It's just certain things that we, we always kind of like, you're like, why? You know, and we, they, at the same time, it's like, you know, hey, everyone's going to pick their favorites, whatever. It's like the same thing. At one point, like, you know, I, I, I'm just probably even to this day, I probably might be the least favorite junkie, right? You know, at one point, everybody ah, used bollocks. to. bollocks. You know. <laughs> he says in his no, thicky this, this English really, accent. Like, you know, one, at one point, everybody used to say, you know, like, especially when the height of turntables and everybody looked at Jay like, he can't really, you know, like, he's not, you know, like, he's not doing all, like, all the crazy juggles and scratches and shit, you know? But the, the, what what people don't understand with Jay is that, you know, like, when we did our tune routines, he put the funk into, you know, like, he helped us, like, yo, we should do this, this, that, you know, like, mm. like, he, he, you know, he was that, he was the funk that gave us the funk and shit like that. Yeah. Our style of mixing is because of Jay. When we say beat junkie style of mixing, that's because of Jay. You know, he's James Brown on turntables. Man. Like this guy, this guy is, he can take any record. You give him any record, yeah. can fuck it without even being marked. Never heard it before and can fuck that shit up, mix it the way he wants it. I mean, he might not be on some technical, like doing the, you know, you know, doing like whatever, uh, one, you know, eighth note quarter beat juggles or, or hydroplaning to, to uh, boomerang scratches and shit like that. But I mean, we, we we came up with the turn trip mixing, but it's really we call it just DJing. But it's just you know the, when yeah. people started putting labels on on, on names on on ter- certain techniques and stuff. Yeah. So we kind of like fuck it. Let's you know like let's 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 get our mark. Let's get you know like that mm. trick mixing. Be junkie style. Trick mixing. I felt like you guys were like, I mean, this uh, this is purely from my my positioning geographically and and in the depths of the culture uh you were like uh you were like a uh here's the best way to describe it you guys were a an organization and the the feel that you guys came as a crew on like you say it was like 13 plus you rolled like you know like you get those graffiti crews you know, which right, the, right. you know the, the you know the, the crew mentality. It felt like you can't fuck with the beat junkies, doing you know, because there's just too many of them. <laughs> well, I mean, well, it helps a lot. It's like a lot of us were, you know, became really friends because of teaching hip hop and shit. Like you know, like for me, like Curse. I mentioned Curse. Curse yeah. is like he's, he's your mentor, oldest. right? Yeah, he's the oldest, and I'm the second oldest. Yeah. And it'll be between me and, and well, yeah, it'll be Curse, myself. What's like kind of the same age as me? Chalk's a year uh, after, you know, after me and stuff like that, you know. So, um, Curse, I, I've said this in many interviews and stuff. So, Curse is, uh, um, I went to high school with him and stuff. That's uh, crazy. And he's half Filipino, half white. Right. So, in many sense, he was my Qbert before Qbert came into play. Because d- during the during those times in the '80s and stuff like that, again, you got to remember, hip hop was is a predominantly black and Latino culture scene. You know, there's just mm-hmm. in terms of what it was going on and stuff, and, and, and especially in LA or in Southern California and LA, a lot of Asians, a lot of, especially Filipinos, were very active in the hip hop culture. Mm. I mean, you were, you know, if anyone that came up, you did at least two to three out of the four elements, right? Yeah. yeah. Asians were not very outspoken, you know, but so there weren't really many Asian MCs, but mm. there were a lot of DJs. There were a lot of uh, b-boy poppers, dancers, a lot of graph artists. And stuff oh my like that. god. Right. So, I, I mean, yeah. I did three of those and stuff. So, and then, you know, uh, so, cause I can't rap for shit. <laughs> I can't even rap gifts good either. So, there you oh, go. But, listen, you, you make up for on so many other levels, brother. Yeah. But what I was trying to say, so Kurt, like, you know, like, Curtis was like, again, he's, I learned a lot just watching him because he was res- the fact that he was respected within the book with the black and, and Latino communities. Cause at the time it's like, it's, I hate to say it on some, like on some eight mile shit, you had to, you know, Go for you had to, you had to get, you had to really, res- you know, get that respect. Mm. It really do. I mean, sure. You, you deal with some of the stereotypes. Like, Hey, what's this, 
what's this, this Chinese guy? I'm not even Chinese, but what's this Chinese guy trying to do and shit? Once you show them proof, they're like, ah, oh, shit, you know? Yeah. So there's a duality in this stuff like that, you know, and even to, like, hmm. even within the Filipino, you know, like the Asian community, Filipino community, like, you know, like, like, again, Asians in the, in, in the West Coast have been involved in, in the hip hop culture for such a long time, since the 80s. Yeah. But it was also a bubble, like, the, you know, like it, it, during those times, it was segregated in some ways, you know, like, it, it's just like Asians would hang out, even though they're hip hop, but, you know, there was also a glass level, uh, a glass uh, ceiling See, and shit. Yeah. And for me, I was like, and Chris was able to break all of that shit and stuff like that, get that respect. Because he was, wrong, cool. you know, he was, you know, he was, you know, he, he got that respect and shit. Not that I was like, yo, he was a, you know, it's one thing hearing mixes mm. on the radio. It's one thing hearing scratches or whatever on, on records and shit. But, and I've seen other DJs like, but he, for me personally, was to see, see someone that had my, my skin color. Uh, background, whatever, and to see him cut, uh, he was the first person to actually see him like cutting it up. I that must like, have changed your whole life, bro. Oh fuck yeah, fuck my head up. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was, yeah. you know, before he was DJing, I was, I was popping and doing graft, but to see him do, like, seeing him, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 that, that kind of like <clears throat> to get the respect he was doing and shit, like you know, just like mm-hmm. he was like he was the, you know, like besides you know all the heroes we all grew up listening to mm-hmm. him. Uh, another cat named Arabian Knight. Two black brothers, uh, 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 two uh, two African Americans. Uh, Arabian Knight, who's now uh, he was a KD mix master at one point. He became an MC now. He right. goes by the name of Psycho, or part of a group called Insane Poetry. So they were kind of like the almost the forefathers of horrorcore rap, right? So really, what? Yeah, Insane Poetry. So they were. Hold they were on, all I know the- these guys. I yeah, know, were, I know them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they, yeah. they, they rolled. They rolled with you know, like with Rodney on Joe Cooley. That's no, I remember now. I remember. Yeah, that they they were proper hardcore. Hardcore. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 were, they, they were before. They were before before Grave Diggers. Yeah, that's right. I remember yeah, yeah. them very well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so he became from a DJ became an MC, and then another person now, uh, which kind of like I kind of got my name from is the name of Scratchmatic. Gotcha. So, so he was a local legend, but he was one of the like. But he was also like an LA. Uh, he was a local legend where I, where I grew up, uh, a place called Cerritos, which is like a uh, suburbia, in, uh, thirty minutes away from LA, but in okay. LA County and stuff. Okay. So, but he was kind of like one of the first. I want to say they were there at the DJ battles. It was a, so radio, Radiotron. Yeah, of course. So radio, you, you, you that's break dancers, radio. right? Yeah, so that's like we're Badass. basically where the movie Breaking kind of based upon. Yeah. That miracles and shit like that. Uh-huh. So Radio Tron was is is the he used to he entered a battle over there and won the first DJ battle. So he changed his name for his name his original name was Anthony, and that's and they changed his name from Scratchmatic. They named him Antron and stuff like that. So how I got the name Repmatic, Curse used to kind of like he wasn't going by Curse at the time, but um, the Curse used to go like, like Yo Repmatic, Rep. I was like my 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 old DJ name was Fix P H I X. That was my graffiti name, but I so I was like, might as well call myself DJ Ooh, Fix. Kid. Okay, okay. Right? And 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 then he go, you know, he used to go, Yo, Red Matic, Red Matic, don't call me that, dude. I want Scratch Matic to think I'm biting and you know whatever what that. Uh, but but it just kind of stick because yeah. at the same time too, Red Matic was like, what is, what is a Red Matic? Sounds like a refrigerator name and shit like that. It was you know so. So that's how that's, the name came about. That's how the name came about. That's because so. I've always fucking wondered. <laughs> so Rhett, okay, so this is when you get into, this is where the, all the Filipino, <laughs> Filipino right. thing came out. So my parents, you know, if you know, a lot of Filipinos are, are Catholics. So right. My birth name is Nazareth, like Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> so they, you know, so then I was like Rhett. So they named me. So Rhett. It's my other real name or nickname, whatever we want to call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rhett, spelled R-H-E-T-T, right? Yeah. They got that name from Rhett Butler, the character from Gone with the Wind, because that's their favorite movie, right? So yeah. here's the Filipino logic. If you got, you know, so... <laughs> so, so I... Because I, I used to hate my name when I was growing up because everybody would fuck up my name all the time and shit or like, what the hell is this? You know, like, you know, you know. now I'm happy that, you know, 
I got, you know, I got an original name, but back then, you know, you know, kids were like, they were. You know, oh, ruthless, are, man. Ruthless, man. They used to <laughs> Lazy and ruthless. Man. Oh, my God. Fuck my, I fucked my name up so much, and used to, I used to get traumatized about that shit. Oh, mate. Like, trust me, I feel, I feel you. Kids are horrible. So, well, yeah, man. So, so uh, um, they, you know, they don't know what Nazareth is, and then when they said Rhett, they were like, wreck, rich, wretch, rich, wreck. I oh, like, fuck. You know? So, anyways. I would ask, I, I want I remember asking myself, so how did you, like, why did you name me Nazareth? Well, right. Because, you know, we pray to God, if, if you, uh, if Lord, if you give us a baby boy, we will name you after your birthplace. Jesus, you know, Jesus and that. I was like, <laughs> he gave me, so he gave us a boy. So I was like, okay. So well, how did you get right? Well, our, pray, our favorite movie was God went to win. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> so Rhett Butler, but mom, dad, like Rhett, it it doesn't it doesn't spell the right way, you know, Nazareth, Nazareth, you know, Nazareth, yeah, Nazareth. Yeah. It is like, but it rhymes. <laughs> Nazareth, Rhett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's it works. If, it works, you know. Got, if, if people want to understand how Filipino cultures and all that stuff, if, watch comedian Joe Coy. On Netflix, Joe Coy. Uh, yeah, you would. You, he talks about it. Filipino man. Every every Filipino moms, any whether Filip, any yeah. Filipinos yeah. can tell you that's how Filipino moms are. That's yeah. the logic and all that shit. You know. Do you think like DJing? Because you are you're tremendously up to speed. D- did DJing- I try to be. Did DJ help you do that? Did DJ help you do that? Because that's a, that's a sport where you've got to be just up on your tracks. You've got to be up on your game. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. As you, you're walking this encyclopedia. I mean, I don't. I'll be honest with you. I can't do half of the new techniques. That some of these kids are incredible and shit like that. So, I mean, even the new cats. Yeah, Oregon they're crazy. Cats, just like you know, it's like the same thing with b-boying. You know how like. Tsh- oh my god, dude. Yeah, I know. Incredibly. So, but the thing is, is that it goes back to like everybody has their time. You know, you just got to do you. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't be number one all the time. No. I mean, unless you're Kobe or Jordan or something like that, you know, you got that special, invi- you know, not everyone's going to be, you, you need, eventually you have to re- accept that you can't be there all the time. You know, that's, it's stressful. It's like the same thing battling. Like you, like say, if you were battling for beat, you know, beatboxing, you practice, whatever you were in your room, whatever, just right. Same the whole time. Music. Yeah. This shit was stressful, dude. It was great, but it was stressful. Stressful as shit. Fucking, yeah. fucking stressful and shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. Like, if you never battled and shit like that, it is fucking stressful. Jeez, and man. honestly, as much as I enjoyed the, you know, at the time, I don't miss it. Mm. I don't even, actually, you know, like, when they asked me to judge for battles, like, hell, that, even judging battles is stressful and shit. Because then you've like, <laughs> this imposter syndrome kicks in combined with having to judge somebody knowing full well that everyone else is going to get pissed. <laughs> you can't, yeah. Uh, I was like, man... You know, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's like, and then it goes back to like, and then that goes back to again entitlement. I should be the one. It's like, you know what? And it's like, you're never gonna please anyone. It's no, like, it goes. Not. It goes back to as you get older, you just realize you just do the best as you can be as a, as an artist and as a person. That's it. And, but but Rhett, you know, um, and I say this with complete and utter admiration. Like you. A, okay, from a DJ point of view, scratch from a battle point of view, 100%. I get it. You And and I, I suffer the same kind of, I feel you because I, you know, no one else can do Killer Keller, or I hope not. And in doing, in, niche, in niching yourself in that, that time and that era, no one else can do it like you do it. So therefore, you are that style. But then what you've also done in a very Jordan-esque kind of way, is you've, you and the Beat Junkies have taken that um, base model of your identities and individualities and, and history, and you've moved into the radio, the schooling, the TV. And this is, this is a real, for me, this is really like a real admirable move. I mean, we came from the thing is that a lot of our heroes are doing everything, at least from our perspective. You know, yeah. they not only battle, they DJ for rap groups. They did mixtapes. They, they produce. DJ for rap groups. Yeah. They produce. Yeah. Oh, that's that's what you're supposed to do. Just by that's default. We, yeah. 
by default. And then, of course, certain ones, when the new, you know, like, because around like 89, 90, everybody thought DJ was played out. Yeah. Everybody thought, you know, like, and that's what I think that's where the vacuum of like where the pickles and the executioners and us came because we still, when, like, for us in LA, there was a station called uh, K Day. It was an AM station, 1580 KM, K Day. Yeah. That's, you know, that that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. This is like, this is pretty much like, we had the KD Mix Masters. In some ways, we were based upon the KD Mix Masters. The KD Mix Masters was like, at the time, well, uh, it was an all star, basically. Mm-hmm. Tony G, who pretty much led it, you know, he's probably is like kind of like our father in many ways and stuff. It, it, he was a Cuban from, originally from New York to Miami to LA and stuff. Mm. Uh, Julio G. Uh, Julio G is a, a, a West, a, another West Coast legend. A lot of people might know him uh, from the voice for, uh, on Los Santos radio on Grand Theft Audio. Damn, okay. Grand Theft Auto. That's that's Julio G on on Los Santos Radio, right? But he's a he's a dope. He was a fucking dope DJ. He just recently, like, he went for a good ten years. He was uh, Cypress Hills. uh, um, Oh, that's sick. uh, Tour tour DJ and stuff like that. So, but like he, uh, uh, Joe Cooley, Aladdin, Ralph M from the uh, from Funk Dubious, Battle Cat, uh, um, M Walk with DJs for uh, uh, for um, for Tone Loke. Trasky, rest in peace. Uh, Jam and Gemini. At uh, one point, Dr. Dre, Bobcat, who's part of Uncle Jam's army and was uh, uh, part of LA Posse, DJ for El Cool J and shit, produced, you know, like that. So we had a, wow. you know, and then before that, also uh, Uncle Jam's army, which is Egyptian lover. Yeah. I mean, this is Bob- like a this ped- high pedigree going on here. Yeah. <laughs> we grew, grew up on, the, on that. Yeah. Beside, along with whatever was coming from New York and shit. K Day mm. was the, whatever. You gotta also remember, it's almost like the same thing with you guys. Whatever, like West Coast, LA in general was like obviously three, four years back and behind yeah. New York. So whatever would trickle in New York, we was like, oh, that's it. We didn't know, you know, like when Planet Rock hit, that was a big thing over here because because uh, you gotta understand, we all we were listening to funk. We we're listening to new wave and funk, right? Yeah. And then when when you know, and people. People got forget to popping and locking came from the West Coast. That's so right. Cats were right. They so cats were popping right. So yep. when, so when break dance, when breaking, and all this shit that was coming to New York, coming started coming to LA. We we're like, what's this shit? Mm-hmm. And they were at the time we seen we were, they were they were breaking the planet rock. We didn't know about breaks. Mm-hmm. Break. We found out about breaks a little bit later on and shit. You know, That's we bad. were all listening to funk and shit like funk and new wave, mm-hmm. Elect, you know, or we would call it electro and shit like that. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Whatever we were, we were behind, you know. Like, and K Day pretty much was the one that brought, you know. Like, honestly, they bro- helped broke a lot of New York artists here. They played it, you know. It, it was a twenty four hour, twenty four seven hour station. It was a hip hop station, but they played not only like hip hop. They played freestyle music. They played funk, soul, disco house at different That's times. That's sick. Whoa. We were listening to every. We were listening. To, I mean, it's almost like the same thing of what they were doing with like Kiss. You know they, but that's different times and shit. And yeah. K-Day, you know, and K, like I said, the K Day Mix Masters were our, were our heroes and shit. Like a, you know, for West Coast and shit. So, the junkies were kind of modeled, in many ways, after the K Day Mix Masters. Got you. Well, now this now opens up my mind. That, well, that 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 makes complete and utter sense when you run off those um, names. K Day, then then this this makes logical sense. All right. So when when K Day went off the air, and then everybody thought the DJ was played out because now and then every every rap group now don't need a DJ; they get a DAT player, right? Yeah. The DJ just did that. We pretty much went underground because everybody was saying, "You still guys are a DJ, and we still like to cut it up and shit like that," you know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how like what the junk. That's how the junkies are. Like some of us, you know, we have were from even just we were from different mobile DJ groups. Yeah. When our other partners were like. Like stop DJing and shit. We were like, I Put was together still DJing. And, yeah. That you know, it's like yo, you know, I met Jay, met Mello, you know, Curse, you know, mm-hmm. I, like I said, I grew up with Curse. You know, we were just, just you know, like minded yeah. cats and shit. Still cut, want to cut it up or buy records and you know, like that. And everybody's like, oh, you know, they at yeah. one point everybody used to think, you know, like you still DJ. That's played out. 
But dude, like, dude, you know what's crazy about these stories is from the out again from the outside looking in, the way that America came in, like on a whole nother DJ tip. You guys were like, it was like a WWF nineties WWF era. Like there were you all of you were characters. Then they and and not only were you, it was almost like someone had incubated you guys in like some skill set, some skilled room. Where all of a sudden, like you came out like, I don't know, like. I mean, you know, there was, there was, you, you, you could, there was also videotapes floating around, like, like, okay, Q, like, say for Q and Mike, and, you know, with the pickles and stuff. Yeah. We knew about Q. As, as a Filipino American, I always heard about Q. He's Q's in the Bay Area. So, Northern California. I'm mean, yeah. we're in Southern California. Close, yeah, yeah. But, told, told you, Curse is, is like Mike Huber. So, I knew about, you know, but then I would heard Q, but so I would see all her tapes or seen videotapes of Q and stuff like that, right? And yeah. eventually, you know, I heard about Mike as well, you know. The Bay Area has, you know, has a big, you know, Filipino community. There's a big, you know, like I told you about mobile DJ scene. Yeah. They had, they had, we, we, there's a big Filipino mobile DJ scene. What, the difference between, uh, you know, it's almost the same, but the difference between uh, the, the Southern California Filipino mobile DJ scene versus the North, Northern California. We grew up to, obviously, again, K-Day, Uncle Jam's Army. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, a lot of it was through skills. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't old. I wasn't old enough to go to Uncle Jam's Army. They used to throw big concerts at the LA Sports Arena, like big, you know. But so I only seen, I heard picture, seen pictures or like whatever. But I wasn't old enough to go to those parties, right? Right. Uh, um, sure. We, when you go to Northern California, they had the DJs and stuff, but then they had the elaborate sound systems and lighting systems, mm-hmm. like to a point where they bat, like they had when they do parties, you know. They would, each DJ would bring their own system in each corner and stuff like that. Like, well, I like had a sound you know, clash style. Yeah, basically, right? We had sound clash, like we had sound system, but it's not as, as, as elaborate as the northern, northern California. But the thing we uh, uh, we do uh, uh, have in common is like you know, like one person would be good at at, at, at putting equipment together. One person's good at doing work. And one one person's mix good at mixing certain songs. I was the guy that scratch. <laughs> Good, like yeah. right you know yeah, so yeah. you know and then or you had like and, and then okay one person has one turntable the other person has another turntable mm-hmm. the other person has a speaker we all put together and you know the, that was a like a band like you were the formation of a band essentially right you know because yeah. we couldn't afford you know like yeah, yeah, yeah. We afford you, like, you know. <laughs> so but that was a i would say there's a difference but yeah uh q so going one of when q now this is because in terms of filipinos as a Filipino American in, in hip hop, again, going back, that hip hop is a black Latino culture. Mm-hmm. Let's get that straight, guys. Absolutely. You know, you, you can't, you know, can't you, you can't deny that shit. You, no. if you do, you're not really, really love. Exactly. You, know, you don't love this culture. You know. Exactly. And, and this co- that culture is providing for people outside of that the the, 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 the minorities to give us to what we're doing. You That's know? right. So, so anyways, so, so when Q won the USA DMC championship, that opened up a whole, like, oh shit. The same thing. Mm-hmm. This guy, not black, not, not, not Latino, maybe mm-hmm. white, Asian, Filipino. That's, that was a big thing too. That's like, you know, I, I knew about Q and stuff. Mm-hmm. Q and I are like the same age and shit, you know? And um, when he won the USA and went to the world's, and you know, it came up with a different style and shit like that. Uh, that blew everybody's mind because it's that because you you most of the time you watch the about you know you're the new mixed seminar battles, yeah. mostly black, mostly blacks, maybe you know, maybe some Mexicans. Maybe you look. I mean, just recently towards the end, you know, you had like people from Europe, you know, from Europe like Francisco Zapata from Italy, uh, yeah, noise yeah, yeah. from noise from uh, 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 Copenhagen yeah that's right Copenhagen I mean I mean you got to cut Mr. Swift but you know he was black but you know but still UK then eventually Honda from Japan and shit like that yeah yeah, right? yeah. when Q won that battle as a Filipino because as as Filipinos we didn't have no Michael Jackson no Michael Jordans okay yeah. our heroes were basically our parents and then maybe and then Dan and Santo. Dan Santo is Bruce Lee's right hand man. If you remember mm-hmm. Game of Game of Death, yeah, the ninchuck scene, that's yeah. Dan Santo. That's really? Bruce Lee's. Okay, that's that's Bruce Lee's right hand man. He taught 
Bruce how to use ninchucks and the, and, and, and the Cali sticks, Filipino sticks, wow. fighting sticks. Okay. So if you're watching in the dragon, he's doing those sticks. Yeah. Ninchucks, that's all Dan and Sano taught talk, talk him that. Okay. Pop trivia right? there, people. Come on. There you go. Right? So so that's that's maybe our, like, and then, of course, Bruce Lee, in terms of Asians, Bruce Lee, of course. Yeah, hands Bruce down. Lee was, you know, yeah. But as a, as a Filipino, Dan and Sano is probably the closest hero in terms of anything like that. Then outside of that, you know, like, we didn't have no heroes, right? You know, like, I mean, Nasty Ness is like one of the first OGs from Seattle. Like he's mm. part of Nasty Mix Records, which is Sir Mix a lot. Yeah, right? for sure. So, so right. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but we didn't have any really heroes that we can relate to. So when Q won, that was like, oh, like, yo, I can do that shit. Something that is such a given that, you know, it's like, um, seeing Hendrix play guitar or hearing a, a middle eight guitar riff or someone doodling away, someone hearing a scratch on a record, you know, no matter what generation of scratch it is. Right. It's such a given in our, in our pop culture, in our social culture to, to have these things. It's just like for anybody, it's second nature. Well, of course that's a guitar being played. Of course that's a guitar riff. Of course that's Eddie Van Halen's, you know, I don't know, whatever tune, you know. Um, right. But, but the point I'm making is the the foundations that have led to making these, these equi- the, the equipment that DJs have now, it's through the ingenuity and progress of the likes of you, Cuba, and all these, the, the foundations, the, 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 the purveyors of, you know, you guys got behind the technology every single time. I remember that Vestax, was it, 06 Pro or some oh, shit? Oh, oh. Oh, five. Oh, five, yo. And it's just like, you guys, you know, the switch that had that you could go left and right on the crossfader instead of right and left. It was it was all these different new combinations that, you, yo, you changed the shape of shit, bro. You, all of you, you all changed the shape of shit. Man, thank you. I mean, I don't like, you know, like, before when we were younger, yeah, yeah, I did this. Now it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's great, you know, again, it is an honor, but you can't really write on the accolades. No. I mean, it's just I like, it's, you. you know, like, I, like before, yeah, man, I'm the co-creator of the old five pro, whatever, you know, like, you know, but, uh, you do know that if I didn't say, you know, from the heart, I say that. And a lot of people listening right now, it would just be undeniably time that if you, if you don't know it by now, I need to tell you on the podcast, especially your podcast. It's facts. You know, it's facts. You were there, you done the thing and you, you, Okay. I hear you because you're constantly learning. That's paramount. And technology's gone fucking crazy. Um, but, you know, you were part of the organism of, of DJ we all culture. Are. We all are. One way or another, we all are. That's right. It goes back to even, like, if you want to go take on something, like, again, so for someone, whether you're from the UK, or you're from LA, I've, as learned that to really realize the scope of what, not only hip hop culture, but just in general as, as human beings, we have to travel from you know, other different mm-hmm. cultures because you really realize that you're just a speck in this shit. Yeah. It's just a speck, dude. Like, it's like, you realize, I mean, we all have prides of where we're from and stuff like that, but really you can learn so much just by, you know, like what we take for granted where we're from versus whatever people, you know, when you go to another country mm. and culture and experience it, you realize it's like, you know, like if you're closed minded, you will not understand it. But then if you're put in a situation where it's like, holy shit, it's like, yeah. what if you don't have all that stuff? You don't have nothing to go back. And this is what you have mm-hmm. right now. It makes you think like, okay, I ain't shit. Mm. I you feel know? you. And, and, and that goes even with hip hop and stuff like, you know, like again, Going back to the beginning of the conversations and stuff like, yes, hip hop came from the United States. It's an American culture. It's a black Latino American culture. But what's beautiful about this culture extends it to a lot of genres, a lot of a lot of um, ethnic backgrounds, different people, cultures, and stuff brought together. If you can't even speak the same language, but we can talk about the same record. Just showing that, like, we got this. We're like, oh, and then, of course, we can say, like, Muro, shouts to Muro, 
Japan, right?、Uh -huh. Can't speak English. Can't、yeah. speak English. But if you see, show them a record, you go, oh, dope. You know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying?、Yeah. Get, hip hop has its own language, its own quote. That's the beauty of that is the beauty of hip hop. And, you know, like you get to learn and stuff.、Uh, but the only thing is just that, I don't, like you said, it's different now.、Uh, I don't know if you know, there's a lot of, there's no, it's cool that you have something like this that hopefully someone a younger age or even our age. They're not really very versed in this, get to hear what we're talking about and stuff.、Mm. And, re,、uh, and, and it's as in any culture, you should, you should know the history of it.、Definitely. If you want to be involved with it, you have to know it. That's, that's as in anything. That's in anything. You got to learn this stuff. You have to learn it and stuff. Rucker, Rucker said this thing once, and I think it was on a Glastonbury documentary that I saw. He said, Before idolizing someone, get into some research and find out who your idols idolize. Oh, that's some real, yeah, that's real spit. Rocket, man, that's no problem. Rock is on some levels. <laughs> he's always, always on some levels. Always. You know, what's crazy is because Rock, you know, like a lot of people don't know, Rocka is half black, half Korean. Really? No. If you listen,、really? if you listen to, uh, 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 if you listen to、uh, Triple Optics, yeah. He, Listen to verses, uh, something, uh, uh, Korean world, the、uh, Korean world child. Da, 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 da. Just listen to it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, wow. It, so, I love, love, love listening to shit. I, Anderson Pack is half black, half Korean. Really? Oh, man. His wife is Korean. Hip hop has always been a reflection of, of real. Life culture, life.、Oh. And, and yeah, I think people will take these podcasts, I hope they do, as documentation, evident of the fact, you know, there's no record shops, there's no fat beats anymore, you know what I mean? Not, you can go online, but it's not, there's no, that, there's no community.、Um, it's interesting when you say that with records and stuff, because now, I mean, it's not going to be like how it was in the 90s and stuff, but. People are buying records. They're buying records, yeah. They're like, I mean, the cats, they're, old, they're now old enough.、Yeah. They want to have something tangible. Yeah, you know? that's right. They, it's like they didn't, they didn't get to experience what we got to experience. I mean, they kind of do a little bit to a certain degree, but it's、yeah. not, you know, because there's obviously there's not that many record stores or something like that. But, you know, like, look, it's crazy how vinyl is, 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 is Made a comeback. Yeah, it's made a comeback. Even cassette tapes as, as, a, as, a, as a collector's item. But so, yeah. As we, it goes back again, like, here's a duality is like, you know, like the younger cats are now, as they're, they're getting older. They're used to, you know, they're,、yeah. if you're talking about today's standards, yes, hip hop music in terms of today's standards and what's going on in, in the radio and TV, whatever, it's a young man's sport. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But if you're talking about on a culture shit,、mm. it's a grown man shit. Yeah. And it reflects what's going on in real life. It reflects what's happening. It's a mirror. Right. A mirror. And、it's、the thing、mirror. is, and it goes back to what we're saying, we are becoming our, we're becoming our parents. So we see things in a very rose tinted kind of way of back, back in the day. And... Back in the days, but then they don't realize the reality is like, yo, man, you're just as worse as them. Right? It's like, yeah, yo, yeah, yeah. Let's remember you know, that you like, yeah, and you know what, as well?、Um, some of the records that I listened to when I was like 16, 15 years old,、mm -hmm. I do sometimes go back to them and I think to myself, actually, I always think I was hyping this one a bit too. I thought it really banged up. Maybe, actually, no, this doesn't sound as good as I thought it did. <laughs> do you know what I mean?、Right. That happens too. <laughs> right. I mean, and it goes back, also, and I guess, like you said, age comes with wisdom, right? So、yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not going to bash what's out there right now. I mean, I, I'm not a、nah. big fan with a lot of stuff, but. There's some stuff that's out there that I was like, ah,、oh, that's cool. I'm not mad at that. You know, like, but、mm. I have to remind myself, why am I chasing that shit? I'm not, I'm not 16. I'm not 18. I'm not 21. I'm not 25. I'm not going to go up there and, you know, do that shit again, dude. Like,、mm. I, I ain't, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to pop bottles and shit. Cause I, you know, and everybody that complains about that shit is that they, the irony is you hear people complaining about that、yeah. shit, but yet they still listen to that shit. 
Yes, that's right. That's, that's a bit the bit that does me in, man. Actually, that out of everything is a bit that does me in. You you complain that everything sounds the same, yet you still go and get it. Right. So it goes back to even like let's talk about the complaining again. So like yeah. so for us, there was, there was a, at one point there were people complaining about real DJing. Uh, there's no you know they talk yeah. about Serato being it's like they forgot that Serato is a tool. It's digital, right? There's not that many, like you said, there's not many record stores, right? Yeah. DJing still a skill. That's right. Half the people, you know, like, sure. You have Serato. Okay. It goes back to like, dude, I can, you, you, you made a point. Like we all have the techniques, but it's all our own styles. Mm-hmm. I can, I, I can play the same record. We can have the same records, but we're, or I can beatbox, whatever, but we're going to flip it the way as, as individuals. That's, that's what makes us stands out. Yeah, that's, we all that's, have the same tools. We all have the same tools. It's what you're going to do with that, right? That's right. And, and it's just, a, it's technology. Yeah, it gets lazy many times and shit like that. But mm. at the end of the day, it's a skill. And I can, here's the thing. People that talk, compl- at one point complain about Serato, right? Yeah. And then actually, you know, they're DJ on Serato and stuff like that. But here's the fun- funniest <sighs> thing. It's like, okay, I can go on Serato, but I can go on vinyl. Can you do that? I can yeah. do that. I, I mean, I can do that on CD DJs. But can you do what I do? That's the same thing about sampling. They say, oh, sampling is, is a, well, can you do it good? That's a difference. That's, That's right. A, can you can you do beatboxing? Now, it goes back to de- again, DJing and stuff. We You used to hear about people like uh, just complaining about, man, this this DJ is doing this and this and this and this, whatever, whoop de whoop de whoop. Man, there's no, there's no, that's where the idea of the school came about. Right. You know? Okay. So, because it goes back to right now, because we, you know, we were kind of hesitant at first. And there was D Styles that actually says, you know, we should open up a school. I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. But D, when D said it on some, like, look, look what happened to old world champion, champion boxers when they retired. They opened a gym, right? And they teach. Oh, that's so sick. Okay. Right? Not saying that we retired. I get you. But, you know, but that's you know because we were thinking we we're at a, we we're at, when we did when we had our twenty year anniversary like who would thought we had a twenty year anniversary that's crazy. like that yeah. we didn't know we were still a crew you know but we were, you know but everybody was busy like that but it's like J Rock was a, was a, was against of having a, a, a anniversary because he's, he's, he's he says I don't want to date myself yeah, but, I, you get know, I get it you know, I get it I get it too but but it's like you know too. It's a big, it's a big thing. It's twenty, man. It's it's a big, it's a biggie. It's a big thing. So when we did it, we were surprised when we started doing shows and doing tours of it. We were surprised how many people came out, especially in LA. Like how many, like, like how many people wanted to see us perform still, and the age difference. Like that's cold. Really, that kind of yeah blow, blowing our minds, and it got to a point where it's almost like kind of like a second wind. And we kind of realized that we're older now, we're mm-hmm. mature, you know, we're, you know, because ten when we had our 10 year anniversary, you know, we had a label and all that stuff, but we weren't, we were still artists. We were still, you know, we were just trying to get shit, you know, we didn't, mm-hmm. we weren't, we weren't, we weren't uh, uh, mature enough. Yeah. Now we're mature enough. That made me realize, you know what, that made us realize like, let's, let's, we see, we still got something. We be a fools if we don't, you know, yeah, uh, take advantage of this. So we started, you know, we started putting back merch, then we eventually started a, a website pool, and then because your brand was always tight as well, that's the other thing, right? But then you know, but this is this is us now doing the work and really to match you know, it, like you know, match it, yeah. And then when D says like, you know, the next step, we was like, what, 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 what can we do? Because we already got the pool, we got this, we got that. It's so opened up a school, and from there. It may, you know, we started realizing, like, you know what? Instead of complaining about what's going on with what's going on right now in the, in the DJ scene, let's do something about it. That's right. At least, put, and and then it goes back again to also culture-wise. Mm-hmm. Why is it hip hop is the only cultural genre is that we we don't teach our history and we we debunked our legends and we make we make fun of, our, uh, of the young kids while you see other music genres or cultures going crazy. Yeah. Doing, always giving up to their, their, you know, knowing the history, 
giving up to their heroes, the legends, mm. showing and showing culture. So mm. once we got again, ego, take the ego out. Yeah. Once we got over that, that's when things just opened up a lot of things. And you know, that that was another, you know, uh I was a, again I was trained, you know, I was trained jitsu already. And that was how I would apply it because now it makes you say, okay, sure, I'm a teacher, but teaching is a whole nother whole ball game, man. Yeah. It, really, it makes you realize, it makes you become a student again. And honestly, because of, because of being a teacher, I become I actually became a better DJ because I'm able to teach because I'm able to break it down. Like mm. out of all of us, Mr. Chalk was the one that has been teaching. He was teaching at the Scratch Academy in LA. Right. He was like the, the, the LA director and stuff. And so we told him we want to open school. He's like, you know, like, you want to make money for them or you want to make money for the crew, for yourself? Yeah. yeah. And so that, and he taught, he was the one that kind of helped us to learn how to teach. We thought teaching was going to be easy. Oh, hell no. Yeah, no, no, there's a whole. <laughs> oh, hell no. But I tell you so, what, though, it does keep you grounded. I mean, like, your ear is on the ground the whole time. When you're listening to, I found when I was teaching, not by any means close to the way you guys are, but I, you know, I had my, I had my turn, I had my season of it, and um, yeah, they do throw some questions, an honest question, that makes you realise, yo, actually, they got a point, you know, and yeah, actually, this, you feel like you're closer to the to to a younger a younger um, generation, don't you? It's well, not even that. It's just. With our school, oh, it's different youngest, ages. It, our our youngest is like nine, ten years old. Our oh, oldest wow. is like 52, 53 years old. Uh, the oldest, our oldest student is a judge. Get out! Woo! I'm not kidding. That's crazy. Six, like 60, 70 percent of our students are women. That's amazing. Of course, yeah. No, and it's crazy. Women pick up DJing quicker than guys. Yeah, I'm all about that. I'm all you about know. celebrating that. Yeah. So, and, and it's and it's crazy because it's like I, I, we we were able to give them a space because you know women are intimidated. It's a DJing, you know, testosterone driven man fest. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah. so <laughs> uh, once once we were able to give them that space, man, they took off. Man, they're like, man, we got some great students that happen to be women that just yeah. just killing it and shit. That's inspiring. Amazing. Inspi- inspiring and shit. It's like, oh shit, I better go practice and shit. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Man, now, but yeah, you. man. I mean, uh, it it learn it it, hum- it goes back in. It humbles you. Makes you realize, man. You know, like it's if we want something, you know, if you want it right or what, or you know, you you don't want to, comp- you know, don't complain. Do something about Do something. it. Something. Act up. Do you think, Rhett, man? Like even talking to you now. There's something about hip hop, uh, and I know this is ingrained in like the first things that you get off of as a kid. But even talking about it, when I see a fucking badass breakdance battle in 2021, or you know, because there's some crazy shit going down, but I, it pulls out my inner child, man, and I feel I feel like m- driven again. Do you know when you know, and it's just it, I don't know what it is about hip hop. It just does that to you. You know what I mean? Because it's 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 raw. Yeah. It's 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 the the essence of it is raw and authentic. It's nothing yeah. but it's 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 expression. It's basically mm. expression of what it is and stuff like that. It's it's this also the showing the struggle. Mm. It's this you can, again. Not only hip hop is again is a black a black. American culture art form it came from struggle hip hop takes something that was nothing and made it something yeah yeah whatever it, it, it can flourish wherever it's at and then know how to adapt to it yeah that's one thing the beauty about hip hop and shit so that's you know um, and we have to make again and a lot of people are, you know, they they base hip hop upon what's what's in the what's what's shown on media. Yeah, you know, and we have to, you know, I always try to separate that shit. You know, like again, if you're in the music business, you should know about that shit. You know, like yeah. if you want to be a superstar, hey, be a superstar. Yeah, shit like that. You know, go ahead, but you know, like if 
you gotta if you're gonna be participating well there's rap and there's hip hop you know it's, yeah and and even the hip celebrated hip hop records you've got to delve deeper into the history of them and make sh- I don't know without sounding purist I I value even if like a hip hop kid now or a hip hop guy from back in the day pulled a, a, a commercial move mm-hmm. like he pulled a commercial tune to know that the DNA of him he did that by choice and his DNA is hip hop and he's he's deeply rooted that's a whole that to me is a whole different proposition because it's all about the Integrity of that artist, right. isn't it? Uh, another another one else I'll bring up as a good example. Yeah. Black Eyed Peas. There you go. Yeah, exactly. So so because I, there you go. I know Will I know Will Apple and Taboo. Like yeah. before they were Black Eyed Peas. Yeah. You know, they were known as At Bank Time. Will 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 I Am was Will One X. Yeah. They were dancers, yeah. right? And then yeah. they got signed to when the when uh, well Taboo wasn't part of At, At Bank Clan. He was dancing, but uh it was uh, uh Will, uh, uh Apple I think Mookie Mookie was the third member for At Band Clan, and then and they were signed to Ruthless Records. Easy E, come on now. What I didn't know that. That's mad. At, okay. Yes. Wow. Will one? If you type up Will One X At yeah. Band Clan, that's Will One. That's Will I Am. That's crazy. That, that, that's okay. They were signed to Ruthless Records. Okay. He was on Easy E's labels, right? Will was also a bad. He's a badass freestyler. He fucking yeah, not a freestyle dancer, but a freestyle MC for real, mm-hmm. for real. Right? He can so. Um, when they transitioned to, to Black Eyed Peas, you know, uh, uh, you know, they, you know, they were they were doing they, they were still doing you know like that, and then and eventually, I, you know, of course, when they became more a Black Eyed Peas, and Global, shit, yeah, you know, I, I'm not, I'll, I'll say this, I'm not, I, I'm not really a fan of some of their work, but I know their DNA. Will, exactly, you know, even when there was like the like. The B Boy Summits was going down. Will would come down and d- go check it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, you know, um, I remember one time, <laughs> Will killed it on some. Uh, Supernat had an album release party in L.A. Right? Okay. And, yeah. And everyone that was an MC during those time in L.A. during like everyone from Dilated, Freestyle Fellowship, The Far Eye. Alcoholics, uh, who else was there, right? And I was—I de- remember I was DJing because you know that doesn't sound like a basic de- night by any. Oh, dude, <laughs> let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, dude. Uh, Will came up there and stuff like that. I was de- like after Supernat performed, you know, they he started a freestyle cipher on stage. Damn. Okay. Who came out there? And I was DJing. I remember this shit too. Everybody's like didn't want to give the mic to Will. They didn't want to give the mic to Will. Will come in there, and he fucking went off, like really, like made everybody like, huh? oh shit, like he's st- like, you know. Even though he had he he had the black eyed peas money, he fucking where's the love money and all that shit, like he had all that shit, but he get there and fucked it up and shit and made everybody like, okay, good for him. Uh, yeah, and, Fuck you know. Yeah. And then, you know, the thing is, is that he made that respect. I mean, like, and then, and then, and the last time, and then the next time I seen him, uh, uh, so, uh, Apple, uh, uh, had a song on his, uh, uh, on one of the albums called, uh, Bebo. Bebo means in Tagalog, gr- you know, find girls gotcha. ladies, and stuff like that. And he's rapping in Tagalog, which is a dialect, uh, the main dialect for Filipinos right, in the Philippines and stuff. So, right. uh, he got, you know, he asked, you know, Filipino, like, you know, Yo Red, be able to do a cameo in there. I'm you know, there like that. So mm-hmm. I remember when I saw Will, I was like, hey, man, congratulations, dude, dude. You know, I'm happy for you, dude. And I, I remember saying this to him, like, hey, dude, I'm, get your money, dude. And I like that, but dude, you need to go back to your roots and shit. Don't forget your roots, dude. Listen, and I remember telling this dude, I got some shit, dude. I'm doing some shit with Nas and I'm doing some shit with. With the game, oh, that's uh, yeah, and of course, and, truth then, and, then, and then eventually, yeah. you know, he did the you know, hip hop is dead, and then whatever production he did for 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 the game, and the bus and the buster, too. He did that, that tune, yeah, yeah. Him. So, that was dope. So, uh, and then when I the next time I seen him, I said, That's what I'm talking about, yeah, don't forget, don't, don't forget your roots, don't forget your roots, just 
go get your money. Fucking do all the <laughs> crazy songs. I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not a you know big fan of, but I, at least I know where your head's at. Your DNA, so, where the DNA yeah. is, isn't it? And yeah. the thing is, Will, Will, a lot of people don't know. Will Will came from the hood. He came. He grew up in East LA. East LA's were predominantly yeah. Mexicans. Only black kid. They used to call him Little, Little Willie. For you know, like yo, I came from that from the hood and shit like that. So I mean, wow. yeah, man. So there's a struggle. So when mm. when I, when I see when I see friends that came up with making their moves, like when we're young, of course, again, mm, yeah, b boy shit like that. Now it's like shit. we're older. Yeah. Now it's like yo, man. You know, keep your DNA, but exactly. <laughs> what's um what's the future on that note what's the future for Repmatic what's I mean you got that the V album Visionaries it's fucking great to see you guys on it but yo tell us what's your what's the plans what's the plan before we wrap what's the plans uh still you know like uh uh you know I, like in the next two hours I gotta go teach I gotta go teach online <laughs> Oh, sick. Be junkies yeah, TV. Day in the life, yeah. man. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, still got, you know, beat junkies, you know, whatever, whatever our, our business and platforms and as an artist, you know, like that. Mm. Um, just, you know, whether it be the school or our merch or, or online mm. uh, websites and the visionaries, we, you know, we're building, uh, obviously being really independent, doing it ourselves too, learning stuff um and uh, yeah, pick up that uh, Visionaries album, man. If you oh, have it, yeah. you know, like uh, uh, re- regardless if it doesn't it doesn't make a dent or anything. Uh, just for me personally, uh, I'm really proud of the album and how it came out and stuff. Mm. Um, uh, for me as a producer, it's like it's one of the gratifying thing that I can say this in terms of like uh, I was able, like I can I see it from front to back and. You saw it all day through, the, yeah. Excuse, yeah. It's like show and prove as to show as a producer and stuff like that. You know, um, yes. yeah. We, we we got some. You know, you know the vinyl. Finally, well, hopefully in like April May we're gonna have uh, the, you know, Don't. vinyl like that. Um, got some merch and you know working, still trying to work on some more music. Just expanding. Uh, uh, Repmatic as a, as a as an artist a producer you know like uh, I've been lucky enough to it's funny now people are never asking me for beats I can't make I, I can't make beats quick as <laughs> so you like started would, now <laughs> yeah so it's funny it's just like so uh, like I'm not like Madlib who makes thirty beats in one day and shit like that and yeah. there, man there's other you know I just I only can I, you know because most of the time uh, uh, my full time really is like it's either junkies visionaries on one side. And then I'm a full-time caregiver for my mom. So, mm-hmm. you know, so mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's, that's basically what I'm really doing. But I, I, um, I did scratches, like I did scratches for, um, for the upcoming, uh, uh, Eric Bobo from Cypress Hill. Him and, uh, Stu Banger's got an album, a producer's album. Now, so I did scratches on that. Sick. Okay. Uh, I, I did scratches on Breakbeat Lose album. And uh-huh. About to put out, um, I'm going to put out, I'm put up, you know, uh, I've been putting out some producer or beat tapes, whatever, on my Bandcamp page and shit like that. You know, it's just just more work, whatever I can do. Hopefully, more like Cypress Junkies, which is Bobo and myself. We do it with DJ Percussion. Crazy, yeah, 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 uh, crazy. That's fucking great. Yeah, just man, just lucky, just to be grateful to still do what I love to do. Uh, yeah, if I kind of get getting paid. You know, at the end of the day, this is therapeutic for me. This is this is like like you like breathing water. This is like I can't see myself. I don't know why would I be doing without hip hop, really. So, um, what a way to end! That is so fucking. It's poetic. It's fucking the way, it, and I'm exactly the same, bro. Yeah. I'm I mean, exactly shit. The same shit. Regardless of what level we're at in our in our careers, whatever. Yeah. It's like we're talking. Like here. Yeah. This is hip hop. <laughs> this is hip hop. We're talking. We're do- someone f- m- across the pond. Different time zone. Doesn't it make you proud? Doesn't it make you proud of us? What the fucking cool is yeah. that? It just to have friends, like I actually, to have friends yeah. that feel the same way about hip hop. Yeah. In other parts of the country. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, like, hey man, I got to say also like rest in peace to Ty, uh, you know. Yeah. You know, rest in peace to Ty, man. Man, uh, 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 that's a good, 
good brother. I've been I ha had a really good chance two two years ago to yeah. tour with them with uh, me and Bobo, Cypress Junkies, and Ty. And we had a, we found out we had a great chemistry to perform together and stuff. So he's the best. He was the best. He's yeah, in his legacy. Man, that was, uh, man, dude. Yeah. Uh, very real, good-hearted brother. Yeah. Very intense brother, but at the same time, good, good-hearted when yeah, <laughs> when yeah, you yeah, get yeah, him yeah. Up like that. But uh, just really get to know him. You get to really know someone when you really go tour, and you have to share like being Airbnbs or you know you have to go to the trenches and shit like that. And mm. and, and the music he played, man. You know they, they the. His last album was really dope. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, so. Didn't take fools kindly. He he, he called it, and not one moment was he wrong. <laughs> no, man, he was. That's what I I respect him. He he was his convictions of what he believes in. Yeah, his values and stuff like that. That's and even dog. for for community wise, in terms of trying, even as a black man in the UK, and and him trying, you know, like to even for his own community. To, within the UK and it, mm. with, whether it be black and, or the hip hop community and stuff mm -hmm. like that. He, what he championed and stuff like that. So, and I learned yeah. a lot also from that, you know, I mean, I know there's different, like in any areas and stuff, UK has, has have their own sections of hip hop heroes and whatever, whatnot. I mean, some of you guys obviously connected, but it's like, yeah. there was also like, you know, there's. Totally. There's Burroughs generational gaps and, you know, some people are only into UK hip hop. Other people are into all sorts of hip hop. Then there's the rap. Then is you're you're right. You're right. Uh, he was a bridge maker for sure. Yeah. For shit, sure. No, no, no. So respect to you. Respect to Harry Love. Respect to Prime Cuts. Respect to uh, uh, um, Mr. Thing. Respect to uh, Shorty Blitz. Uh, mm. Man, uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing a lot of people. But the, the, the people I mentioned are the ones. Like like yourself, like the ones I really, you know, like I know personally and shit like yeah. that. You know, the ones I mentioned are like why uh, I've been really like personally lucky to know, like like you and stuff like that. So it's no an honor for you to ask ask me to be on your podcast and shit. So I'm mean, I'm sure it's someone in UK who the bloody who the bloody shit is Rhett Maddock. No, nah, okay. afraid not, mate. Uh, you know, as you've spoken exactly. Exactly what your audience come to expect from you, brother. And I think my audience massively reflects yours. It's it's all one and the same heart, and it it moves, ever flowing. And uh, yeah, I'm just humbled that you come on and you you spoke you spoke like a visionary. <laughs> <laughs> look up, look up, come on. <laughs> you know that's the commercial trailer right there. <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us, my man. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Uh, Rip Max podcast. And uh, we are out like him was out of fashion. Sharing is caring. Don't forget, spread the word. We are out like him was out of fashion. You stay lucky, people. Say goodbye, Rhett. Salute, salute, salute. Salute, <laughs> salutations, and I'm out. Peace.